test is getting disturbed because of that. We are not having discussions. Uh, so we planned on Saturdays to conduct subject test discussion. <coughs> okay, right. So uh, that's the point. Now, what is the? Is this a traditional question? Yes, this is an expected question very much because fatty acid metabolism is a very high yield area. Now comes our favorite question. What is the highest number of questions that will come in pathology, doctor? Glomerulonephritis is the highest. There is no entrance exam without glomerulonephritis question. So nephrotic syndrome, whenever is very high proteinuria. Normally nephrotic syndrome means 1 gram, 2 grams per day is expected. Instead patient is having 7 gram, 8 gram. And similarly, if the patient is a very elderly person and is presenting with nephrotic syndrome, generally elderly person background of diabetes and nephrotic syndrome means diabetic nephropathy. But other than diabetic nephropathy simply as a cause of nephrotic syndrome, what are the other important causes that you need to consider in an elderly person who is presenting with nephrotic syndrome? You should suspect always a lymphoreticular malignancy like a lymphoma. Whenever a very elderly person happens to present with uh, nephrotic syndrome is what you have to remember and that would be membranous nephropathy is what I want to underscore to all of you. So the immune complexes will be depositing in a spike and dome pattern whenever you do electron microscopy uh, is uh, what you have to basically look for. <clears throat> so similarly infections like hepatitis C, hepatitis B can lead to development of membranous nephropathy and nephrotic syndrome. Drugs like captopril, NSAIDs, penicillamine, probanacid, similarly tumors like lung cancer, colon cancer, lymphomas, they also can lead to development of membranous nephropathy is what you have to basically remember. Emma rightly says, we discussed it many times in our regular class, Hodgkin's lymphoma is the one which generally is associated with the development of membranous nephropathy and associated nephrotic syndrome is what you have to basically remember. So what is the action of parathormone? Parathormone has both catabolic and anabolic effects on the bone. But intermittent exposure will activate osteoblasts and lead to its anabolic effects. Continuous parathormone exposure will lead to catabolic effect. You give me a classical example of the catabolic effect of the, can you get the pen, pen, <clears throat> catabolic effect of the parathormone, suppose you have renal failure, renal failure may kidney ke andar vitamin D ke tayari ho da hai, agar kidney fail ho gaye to vitamin D nahi milega, agar wo nahi mile to calcium levels kam ho jayega, jab hypocalcemia hai, hypocalcemia will stimulate the parathyroid gland to release parathormone. Wo pura parathormone continuously release ho jata parathyroid se. Wo aake bone se pura calcium ko nikal deta. And that is the catabolic effect of the high parathormone continuously on the bone. And the bone become very porous, losing all its calcium. And uh, the patients typically will develop osteitis fibrosa cystica because of the effect of the secondary hyperparathyroidism which you see in the case of the renal failure is what you need to basically remember. Now which peripheral nerve is being examined over here is the question. Is it a traditional question expected? Definitely ulnar now, radial now, median now, brachial now. Muscular cutaneous nerve. A question brachial plexus ke upar agar nahi hai to masala kya hai entrance mein. Definitely it will be there. You have to read it. So doctor it is basically the Froman sign which is being examined in the ulnar nerve where you are looking for the action of the adductor pollicis. Typically the adductor pollicis is very weak when our ulnar nerve is paralyzed is what you need to remember. And whenever you put adductor pollicis 
into challenge and if it is weak who will compensate it flexor pollicis longus will compensate for the missing action of the adductor pollicis isliye thumb kya ho jata flex ho jata so that is called as froman sign kiska weakness ko test kar rahe hai froman sign adductor pollicis kiske over compensation ke wajah se hota hai wo froman sign positivity flexor pollicis longus these are the two questions kaha bhi aap jao definitely they will ask one question okay so you need to read now doctor <clears throat> hallucinogens as a group of drugs group of drugs they include cannabis ecstasy psilocybin etc etc what is the recent controversy about nigerians in hyderabad they are promoting the ganja the spread of the selling of the drugs in the colleges so um, substance abuse is a worldwide problem both impoverished countries developing countries developed countries everywhere so doctor had one question on substance abuse in psychiatry or forensic medicine definitely will come so yeah, this is also a standard question they can lead to acute psychotic syndromes for example cannabis patients will become run amok they catch one uh, knife and keep killing everybody who is on their way so acute psychosis can very much occur with the substances is what you need to remember very easy question actually in fact the opioid induced psychosis tobacco also too much of tobacco can also lead to development of psychosis xanthin oxidase inhibitor another very traditional question gout is one of the very high yielding topics in uh, rheumatology and the gout drugs are one of the top 30th or 40th topic in the topic list priority list in pharmacology you have to read so febuxostat 80 mg typically we administer <coughs> Febuxostat is a drug that inhibits the xanthine oxidase, and uh, it is a non-purine selective inhibitor of the xanthine oxidase. Unlike allopurinol, etc., is what you have to basically appreciate. Where do you see zebra bodies? Actually, this is a old question, but this does not come under the traditional topics. So. पूरा सेवन क्वेश्चन में ओनली फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन अल्लाह मिया के हाथ में है सेवेंथ वन क्वेश्चन आउट ऑफ सेवन इज गॉड्स हैंड में है पूरे छह आपके हाथ में है सक्सेस किसके हाथ में है आपके हाथ में है ओनली वन इज गॉड जिब्रा द जिब्रा बॉडीज ओके सो इसलिए पूरा भगवान को मत छोड़ो आपके हाथ में रखो a good amount of preparation 130 out of 200 65% aapke haath mein hota hai preparation success so fabrice disease may you find this kind of uh, inclusions which are called as zebra bodies histologically and there are the concentric stacks of membrane which get deposited in gangliosidosis is what you need to remember foreign bodies in soft tissues and how will you do the imaging ye padne se aane wale question hai kya nahi wahi aap housemanship mein casualty mein kitne questions dekh kitne patients ko dekha in emergency medicine based on that this is a question not by reading you will answer but by guessing in exam hall This is different from जेब्रा वाला क्वेश्चन जेब्रा तो पूरा भगवान के हाथ में है यह तो आपके कॉमन सेंस विच इज अनकॉमनली अवेलेबल इज उसके ऊपर दिए हुए क्वेश्चन है समझ गए ना हा तो अल्ट्रासाउंड इज एक्सलेंट फॉर डिटेक्शन ऑफ नॉन रेडियो ओपैक फॉरन बॉडीज इज वॉट यू हेड बेसिकली रिमेंबर नाउ लाइपोप्रोटीन लाइपेस एक्टिविटी के लिए व्हाट इज द को फैक्टर 
आपको हाई हाईल्ड टॉपिक लिस्ट दिए ना बायोकेमिस्ट्री में देखो एट और नाइन्थ हाईल्ड टॉपिक इज लाइफ प्रोटीन विदाउट लाइफ प्रोटीन और हाइपर लाइफ प्रोटीन एंट्रेंस नहीं होगा नहीं होगा दिस संडे वी हैव एम्स एग्जाम ट्यूजडे इवनिंग वी विल हैव अ डिस्कशन ऑन दैट पेपर आई विल ऑल्सो शो यू उसका टू हंड्रेड में भी सेम स्टोरी होता है एक लाइव प्रोटीन वाला क्वेश्चन जरूर होता है एक इंसुलिन के ऊपर क्वेश्चन होता है एक गाउट के ऊपर होता है एक एपोप्टोसिस के ऊपर होता है एक ग्लोमलिन एफ्रेडिस के ऊपर होता डेफिनेटली इट विल बी दैट ओके सो डॉक्टर इट इज द एपो सी टू उज इज द को फैक्टर इज वॉट यू हाउ टू बेसिकली रिमेंबर एपो सी टू विल एक्टिवेट द एंजाइम लाइव प्रोटीन लाइपेस इन कैपिलरीज एंड any mutation of this apoc2 gene will lead to hyperlipoproteinemia type 1b but in this people unlike the other hyperlipoproteinemias there is no increased risk of atherosclerosis which hyperlipoproteinemias may triglyceride plus cholesterol elevate hota kis mein only triglyceride hota kis mein only cholesterol hota or in which Hyperlipoproteinemia, you have risk and no risk of atherosclerosis. The favorite issue of the examiner is what you need to remember. Hemophilia A. Is there any risk of transmission from the male to his sons? It is excellent. Male will never give his X chromosome to his son, so there is no risk of transmission. And hemophilia is excellent recessive. बिस्केट क्वेश्चन है क्योंकि एग्जामिनर डोंट वांट यू टू गेट डिसअपॉइंटेड कम से कम एक मार्क भी नहीं आए तो इतना बड़ा एंट्रेंस लिखने के बाद दोस्तों को के सामने हम वी बिकम ए ऑब्जेक्ट ऑफ जोक नो सो इसलिए एग्जामिनर ऐसे क्वेश्चंस भी देता है ओके हा प्रैमिपेक्सोल इज यूज इन पार्किंगजोनिजम ड्रग्स वंस मोर डॉक्टर हाइल टॉपिक लिस्ट इन फार्मोकोलॉजी देखो फर्स्ट ट्वेंटी टॉपिक्स में होता है पार्किंगजोनिज्म ड्रग्स एंड इफ यू टेक जनरल मेडिसिन आल्सो फर्स्ट थर्टी टॉपिक्स में पार्किंगजोनिज्म इज द हाईल्ड एरिया सो यू मस्ट नो द क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ द ड्रग्स टू ट्रीट पार्किंगजोनिज्म यू कैन गिव डायरेक्टली लिवोडोपा वन मेथड बेसिकली पार्किंगजोनिज्म में प्रॉब्लम क्या है डोपोमेन का कमी है तो उस कमी को कॉम्पनसेट uh, करने के लिए यू कैन गिव डायरेक्टली लीवोडोपा वन मेथड सेकेंड बोलो लीवोडोपा अंदर जाने के बाद वो मेटाबोलाइज हो जाता है एंड व्हाट इज दैट एंजाइम कॉल्ड मैवो मैवो बी मैवो बी को इनहिबिट करने वाला चीजों के साथ दे सकते लीवोडोपा को देन दट इज लीवोडोपा प्लस कार्बिडोपा सेकेंड ग्रुप ऑफ ड्रग्स आर वो अंदर ब्रेन के अंदर जाने के बाद देर इज अ कॉम्टी कैटेकोल वो मिथाइल ट्रांसफर इज विच विल डिटॉक्सीफाइड आई मीन मेटेबलाइज इट कॉम्टी इनहिबिटास आर द अदर ग्रुप ऑफ ड्रग्स डायरेक्टली लिवोडोपा कैन गो एंड अल्टीमेटली गोज एंड कैन आई गेट ए बेटर पेन 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 एंड स्टिमुलेट्स द डॉपमिन रिसेप्टर्स इंस्टेड ऑफ लेवोडोपा यू कैन यूज सम ड्रग्स लाइक ब्रोमोक्रिप्टिन विच विल बी ए स्टिमुलेंट ऑफ दी डॉपमिन रिसेप्टर दे आर कॉल्ड डॉपमिन एगोनिस इसमें दो तरीके की डॉपमिन एगोनिस होते एक एरगोड डेरिवेटिव होते दूसरा होता है नॉन एरगोड डेरिवेटिव योर प्राइमी पिक्सोल Ropine role. They are all examples of non-ergot dopamine agonistic drugs. Is what you have to basically remember. Okay, doctor. Ha. Huh, that is very very important. <clears throat> yeah. Come back. Now, doctor. Yeah. <clears throat> dopamine precursors are levodopa. Peripheral decarboxylase inhibitors are carbidopa and benzazide. Dopamine agonists 
receptor level agonist will be bromocriptin, dopinarol, pramipexol. MAVO B inhibitors are selegiline and resagiline and COMT inhibitors are entacopone and tolcopone and ultimately you have dopamine facilitators called amatidine. This is the phar pharmacology of Parkinsonism which you need to basically remember. So, pramipexol belongs to non-ergot group of dopaminergic receptor level agonist is what you need to ultimately remember. Once more, when you go back to AIMS exam or PGA exam, same issues will be there. One question on Parkinsonism drugs ke upar hota hai. But the tremor of Parkinsonism, Parkinsonism mein teen cheeze hote hai. Ek akinesia, rigidity, tremor. In teen cheeze mein, which one is not responsive to levodopa? Levodopa dene se kuch fayda nahi hota us mein. Tremor ko control karne ke liye levodopa utta effective nahi hai. Tremor ko control karne ke liye what is the drug that you need to give? Anticholinergic group of anti-dopamine drugs, trihexy, phenidyl, etc, etc, which are anti-cholinergic drugs, that will better control the tremor, whereas echinacea, rigidity are better controlled by levodopa. That is what you need to understand. Online video library may, you have Parkinsonism topic discussion and pharmacology may, Parkinsonism drugs already discussed and available online video library. You can comfortably, happily, as much as you want, you can revise and get confident for the exam. Now, doctor, which familial syndrome may medulloblastoma incidence badega? Life from any is basically what P53 issue. P53 is the one which prevents the cancer from developing. So, that is the reason life from any may to bahut sare cancers hota hai. Then, Turcotte and Gurlin, what are they? Nevoid basal cell carcinoma is the other name which is being given for the Gurlin syndrome. You have a high incidence of medulloblastoma. Turcotte syndrome also will show presence of high incidence of medulloblastoma. Now, tell me. Bantarti wala, sure shot question hai ya? Uh, 20 marks will come Allah Miya ke haat mein 130, 20 ka jane ke baad 50 questions common sense in exam hall which category this belongs to if you solve previous question papers previous question papers medulloblastoma is a high yielding topic because brain tumors is one of the high yielding topics in neurology and uh, in oncology Life from any etc. They also come under high yield topics. So, the reason this is a expected answer to be answered by you in the exam hall. You have a patient who has a severe post operative pain. You have given morphine. But it, it is not resolving. Then you have given pentagesin. So, pentagesin agar diye to pain will become worse or will it become better is the very important question. There will be a worsening of pain. Why? Pentagosin antagonizes the analgesic effects of the morphine. Pentagosin, it antagonizes the analgesic effects of the morphine. Basically, whenever you look at the receptors, opiate receptors, what are the various varieties that you have? You have kappa receptor, sigma receptor, mu receptor. If you take pentagosin, it is not called a complete agonist. It is a mixed agonist, antagonist type of a opioid. So, pentagosin is agonist for the kappa and sigma, but it is weakly antagonist to the mu receptors. So, that is the reason mu receptors have analgesic effect. That is the reason morphine's analgesic effect is antagonized by the pentagosin, hence pain will worsen, is what you need to remember. Abhi ye batao, ye 130 wala, 50 wala, 20 wala, kis ke haath mein hai, isko answer karna. Agar aap high yield topic list joh hum diye hai, us mein dekhe toh, 
opioid analgesics is in the top 20 topics in pharmacology so that is the reason you have to be 100 percent sure once more aims pgma you see topic ke upar aur ek question aayega so please do come this tuesday evening 5 to 8 and next week tuesday 5 to 8 we'll have aims uh, may 2015 and pgi may 2015 recall the question paper discussion huh? same issues will be there malingering factitious disorder what is the difference between the malingering versus factitious disorder versus somatization disorder versus hypochondriosis in they are all very closely related terminology but there is a difference similar favorite question of the examiner is schizoid personality schizo affective disorder avoidant personality disorder what is the difference between them so monday to friday next week we will have psychiatry class so there are totally 16 topics in psychiatry we will finish uh, in about uh, 15 hours 16 topics in psychiatry so please do come and uh, from monday starting from monday evening 5 to 8 i will be personally teaching you psychiatry so doctor malingering may there will be an inconsistent medical history and physical findings won't support the patient's symptoms just like a child wakes up and say mommy i am having severe headache here head is here but headache is in the belly so i am having severe headache mommy i can't go to the school he will say or he will say i have severe stomach ache here so like that then there is some external incentive in malingering suppose if you say my medicine professor is asking me to do rounds and i'll get seizures if i do rounds with him and start showing seizures is there any incentive behind it you want to you want to make a dumma of the morning rounds because night time discharge summaries everything you did not uh, write properly so some incentive is behind in case of malingering is what you need to remember so patient will have grossly exaggerated symptoms is what you need to remember so malingering versus somatization versus factitious disorder in teen cheezon ke beech mein kya farak hai typically if you take a factitious disorder the person will act as if they have an illness by deliberately producing or exaggerating the symptoms or feigning the symptoms in a factitious disorder patient deliberately will do that early morning you will be doing uh, housemanship duty in the casualty suddenly one patient will come with all uh, blood on his uh, hands and everything doctor i am being followed by people there they have just attacked me then you will think oh first time in my life as a house surgeon to become heroic i had been waiting for this occasion come on you will ask all swabs everything keep ready and uh, suddenly patient will sit and keep reading morning newspaper by the time you keep everything ready he will go and pick up the paper and start reading it i can now never forget as a house surgeon um, a classical example of a patient feigning that he has been uh, attacked with lot of uh, abrasions eh? but ultimately he used uh, the sindur tilak in order to uh, emulate the blood stains eh? so they will also deliberately produce all that the patient's motivation kya hota hai isme he want to assume the role of a sick person in case of a factitious disorder but factitious disorder is different from malingering in case of malingering there is one external motive suppose uh, uh, if a woman has torn her clothes and said that i have been raped by her boss see 
all my dress is being torn suppose if she claims like that is there any external motive behind it it is there to fix, book the boss on a wrong false case similarly fact is a disorder is not like that there is no external motive just they want to uh, present that they are suffering from sort of a sickness and they will emulate the symptoms of it but the reason behind doing that is not any external motive that is the difference between malingering and factitious disorder okay then uh, somato form disorder they have multiple complaints they have headache stomach ache knee joint pain ankle joint pain pain everywhere but they start feeling so many pains but it is not an intentional uh, i mean they are not doing it intentionally in case of somato form disorder they have some psychosomatic disturbance internal conflict psychological conflict that reflects in the somatic symptoms that become the somato form disorder is what you have to basically appreciate then gustafsson's criteria let's talk about it this one nasty question in forensic medicine and uh, uh, and uh, dental sciences neither we are dentists nor forensic experts we are only preparing for entrance exam to become ms general surgery or uh, dm cardiology tomorrow huh? but still you have to read all subjects with same passion at least similar passion so doctor actual answer was given b 1 and 3 only as correct but uh, original nimset uh, paper me but i feel even 2 should be included because secondary dentin deposition progresses towards the base of the pulp cavity it also a true statement if you really go through the literature so all the three are the part of the criteria of the gustafsson's criteria attrition periodontosis secondary dentin cement deposition root resorption and root transparency another favorite question out of all which is most consistent and most important criteria then the answer becomes root transparency is the most consistent and most reliable out of all what are the drugs used for management of hyperkalemia if you want to join md in any of the branches internal medicine or clinical subjects hyperkalemia management is a minimum requirement to be known basic knowledge you have to give calcium why will you give calcium in hyperkalemia hyperkalemia can cause cardiac arrest you don't want those cardiac effects of hyperkalemia to protect the heart you will give calcium not to decrease the levels of potassium then you will also give uh, uh, you will also give bicarbonate because generally hyperkalemia is concomitantly associated with acidosis so unless you resolve the acidosis can give the board <clears throat> unless you resolve the acidosis hyperkalemia doesn't resolve why acidosis lead to worsening of hyperkalemia batao doctor Tip typically whenever you have a membrane he is bringing okay whenever you have a uh, acidosis potassium is basically what intracellular ion aur rasoi ke andar rehne wala rehne layak electrolyte hai aur rasoi ke andar nahi reh ke road ke upar ghoom rahe hai acidosis mein to isliye aap kya karna you must be a fanatic clinician to push it back into rasoi Hmm? so you have to push so how will you do that only if you neutralize the ph of the plasma that is what you need to remember so bicarbonate is given then what else will you give you will bring mother in law to make potassium go back into kitchen who is the mother in law insulin so you will give 5% dextrose plus insulin but insulin will order potassium to go inside 
बट इंसुलिन मदर इला के साथ एक फादर इला भी होना है नहीं तो हु विल गिव हर कंपनी राइट तो हु इज द फादर इला इफ यू गिव इंसुलिन पेशेंट विल गो इन टू हाइपरग्लाइसीमिया इसलिए यू हैव टू गिव फाइव परसेंट डेक्सट्रोस अलॉन्ग विथ इंसुलिन सो फटाफट बोलो ट्रीटमेंट क्या होता है एवर कली भी कली आते ही पेशेंट सिवियर एसोसिस होते बाइकार्बनेट दे देते एक कैल्शियम ग्लूकोनेट दे देते ताकि हार्ट के ऊपर इफेक्ट नहीं लग जाएगा और इंसुलिन प्लस 5 परसेंट डेक्सट्रोस भी दे देते फिर भी अगर हाइपरकेलीमिया इज नॉट रिजॉल्विंग व्हाट इज द कॉमन प्रीडिस्पोजिंग फैक्टर फॉर द डेवलपमेंट ऑफ हाइपरकेलीमिया क्रॉनिक रिनल फेल्यूर विथ यूरिमिया तो आप डायलिसिस करते एंड यू हैव टू ब्रिंग डाउन द पोटेशियम लेवल सो यू विल गिव रिजन विच विल प्रिवेंट द एब्जॉर्बन ऑफ द पोटेशियम इन द सीरम सो you will decrease the git absorption of the potassium so there that is a part of the treatment is what you have to basically remember disinfection and mutilation shredding are the choice of the treatment of disposal of what bolo doctor blue bag yellow bag green bag waste disposal ke categorization and which type of color bag you will use ke bina koi entrance hota kya nahi hota nahi hoga तो इसलिए डेफिनेटली वन क्वेश्चन विल कम वंस मोर आप देखो एम्स पीजीए का पेपर डिस्कशन करें तो ये क्वेश्चन डेफिनेटली विल कम ऑन वेस्ट डिस्पोजल कैटेगराइजेशन कलर ऑफ द बैग्स अगर वो कलर नहीं आए तो दूसरा कलर क्या आएगा एनेस्थेटिक गैसेस का सिलेंडर कलर आएगा सो वन कलर वाला क्वेश्चन तो जरूर आएगा तो कैटेगरी नंबर फोर इट बिलोंग्स टू एंड म्यूटिलियशन श्रेडिंग are the ways by which uh, category 4 uh, uh, ways are basically disposed vitamin a deficiency when will you call public problem this is also another favorite question xerophthalmia what percentage you call it as uh, 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 what level of problem etc you must be very sure so 1% you basically call Oxidative conjugate, diagonal conjugate, true conjugate. You must know all the tailoring measurements of the female pelvis in the obstetrics for you to get the MD seat. The true conjugate can only be measured radiographically. Normally, it is 11 centimeters. Oxidative conjugate is the shortest out of all the three, and it extends from the sacral promontory to the thickest part of the pubic bone, and it is 10 centimeters or more. and diagonal conjugate is the one which is most commonly assessed one because it extends from the lower border of the symphysis pubis to the sacral promontory so whenever you put uh, advance your finger to do the pelvic assessment what is very easy to assess diagonal conjugate because it is the lower border of the symphysis pubis to the sacral promontory on the top and that is 11.5 and after calculating diagonal conjugate you subtract 1.5 to 2 cm from that and that will give you the obstetrical conjugate is what you have to fundamentally remember and uh, normally the value will be around 10 cm of it basics so on saturday sunday on sundays i think you are having regularly obstetrics class by dr shilpa one of the excellent teachers in obstetrics uh, um, and uh, probably she will discuss all these uh, um, important areas 24 year old lady 7 months pregnant with her first child suddenly developed red rash on the lower abdomen along the stretch marks what is the likely cause see doctors obstetrics pregnancy for 9 months is a journey with different complications for different women किसी को बैक पेन वेरी सीवियर होता किसी को पीडल एडिमा विल बी वेरी बैड किसी को हाइपर टेंशन विल बी वेरी बैड प्रॉब्लम वेरी डिफिकल्ट प्रॉब्लम टू मैनेज एंड फॉर फ्यू पीपल प्रोडाइटिस विल बी सीवियर फ्यू पीपल विल गेट हाई एल एफ टी सो डिफरेंट प्रॉब्लम सो वेन एवर यू आर हैविंग ए पेशेंट प्रेजेंटिंग विथ रैश इन प्रेग्नेंसी वॉट इज द डिफरेंशियल डायग्नोसिस दैट शुड कम टू योर माइंड most important is called pup 
pruritic urticarial plaques and papules of pregnancy is what you need to remember. What is the clue to say that this is a case of pupper? Most important thing is that rash will appear on the stretch marks of the abdomen. In the last three months of pregnancy is the common time and with the delivery it will clear. Three points you need to know about pup. Along stretch marks, last three months of pregnancy, pregnancy katam hote hi, pup bhi chale jayega. That is the story of pup. This is a classical example. Along the stretch mark, here you have stretching, stretched marks, no? And uh, almost full term pregnancy, last three months, that is the time where typically you get uh, the development of the rash in case of pup is what you need to remember. And uh, pup is most common in the first pregnancy because that is the time where abdomen is tightest. That is the most common. It starts around the umbilicus. And if you compare other patients who didn't get pup versus those who got the pup, pup getting patients had a greater weight gain. Normal weight gain kitna hota 11 kgs hota hai. Pura 3 trimesters of pregnancy. Trimesters of pregnancy mila ke. Those who get higher weight gain have a higher stretch and a higher incidence of pup. That is a point you need to understand. Then a very close differential diagnosis for this is called gestational femphigoid or the femphigoid gestationalis. Mother ye third trimester tak weight karta nahi. Second trimester may be ho sakta, third may be ho sakta. That is the difference. And pregnancy khatam hone ke baad, after pregnancy also gestational pemphigoid can begin. That is the main difference. And uh, um, it is often confused for pup, gestational pemphigoid. But the difference is, pup typically occurs along stretch marks and usually ends within two weeks and pup is not an autoimmune entity whereas gestational pemphigoid has an autoimmune basis pregnancy ke baad bhi aa sakta or it won't wait to attack only the stretch mark areas that is a fundamental difference between the two okay doctor and once more this is a very standard question expected to be answered Similarly, one more question, don't forget doctor, HELLP syndrome, hemolysis, elevated liver enzymes with low platelet count versus fatty liver of pregnancy versus cholestasis of pregnancy. These are the three entities, how do you differentiate is another very high yield topic in entrance exam. Okay. So now, about the malignant tumors going to placenta. Which one? Often metastasis to the fetus. Yet the purely Amita Bachchan Corporation, ABC, count banega karodpati wala question hai. Melanoma hoga ya lymphoma hoga, fix kia jai. So, exam hall mein aap kuch na kuch guess karke answer karna padta. Yet the Allah mea ke hath mein hai. That time fetus ko kia jai ga? Kisi ko malam nahi hai. So, out of uh, 21 questions, hardly 2 to 3 questions are going to God. Around 15 questions are in your hand, favorite areas. 2 to 3 require common sense. Same distribution, any entrance you go. Toppers go, anybody who become topper, who get ultimately good seat. How will they get? They generally score around uh, 75 to 80 percent score. Wo kaise milta? 65 percent, 130 out of 200 hota na? Usme 130 out of 130, mercilessly they will do correct. There is no shaking or fearing or uh, shivering or squeezing about it. 50 common sense questions mein, 25 they will do. 50 percent correct karta. Unka bhi 25 percent uh, I mean, 50%, remaining 25 questions, mein, they will also fail. So, how much is it? 130, 25, how much is it? 155. 
देन रिमेनिंग ट्वेंटी अल्लामिया के हाथ में क्वेश्चन में अल्लामिया सबको अच्छे अच्छी तरह देख देखेगा नॉट बिकॉज यू आर रीडिंग फाइव टाइम्स नमाज ओनली ही विल फेवर यू नो नो गॉड विल लुक एट एवरी वन इक्वली सो दट इज अ रीजन और जो ट्वेंटी टेन मिल जाएगा सो वन फिफ्टी फाइव प्लस टेन कितने हो गया वन सिक्सटी फाइव जब है इधर उधर सम पीपल विल हैव एक्स्ट्राडनरी ह्यूमरस लेवल ऑफ इंटेलिजेंस होता ना वो वन सिक्सटी फाइव के बिना वन सेवेंटी आता कुछ लोगों को उस वक्त में तोड़ा इधर उधर खिलाए तो वन सिक्सटी फिर वन सिक्सटी होता बट वन सिक्सटी टू वन सेवेंटी विल डिसाइड एवरीथिंग बाकी लोग काली फीस पे करके यूनिवर्सिटी को पैसे दे रहे राइट सो दट इज द रीजन आई वॉन्ट ऑल ऑफ यू टू बी बिटवीन दट वन सिक्सटी वन सेवेंटी आउट ऑफ टू हंड्रेड मार्जिन दट इज द पर्पज आई एम ओवर हियर ओके डॉक्टर हाँ द नर्व रन फ्रॉम द मीडियल वॉल ऑफ द एक्जिला इज उच वन एग्जाम हॉल में you have to use common sense to guess it what muscle will be there along the medial wall of axilla you can feel yourself in the exam hall serrator anterior so long thoracic nerve of bell is the one which has to be there along the medial wall where you have the serrator anterior muscle is what i want to underscore to all of you <clears throat> right then doctor Emma is asking a question. Pruritus and polymorphic eruption both are the both are there in the options in the earlier question. Uh, let's let's go back to the earlier question. I didn't understand the um, specific doubt. Yeah, prurigo of pregnancy is different from polymorphic eruption of pregnancy. I think Emma's doubt is that only. Prurigo was there, polymorphic eruption is there. Why did you choose Y? The entity is called pruritic articular plaques and papules of pregnancy, which is also called in short form polymorphic eruption of pregnancy. It is called as that is different from prurigo of pregnancy. Huh? Then, then doctor, what is prurigo of pregnancy? Generally, in pregnancy, made some cholestasis is there that causes the rise of the bile salts and that lead to development of the pruritus. That is regular wala prurigo. That's the point. Now, doctor, <clears throat> what are the artifacts in pulse oximetry? Is the question. I still remember. Uh, I topped the NIMS entrance in uh, 2001. That time I got second rank. That time, uh, first time I came to know difference between ABG and pulse oximetry. Pulse oximetry is for your saturation. ABG is for your partial pressures, etc. And there is a difference between saturation and Partial pressures. Of course, saturation can also be found in the ABG report. Since then, every entrance may standard question hai. Ek ABG or pulse oximetry ke upper definitely one question will come in this entrance exam of NIMS. Okay, so that's the reason. Um, <clears throat> it is not a very high yield topic, but uh, if you are a good house surgeon, minimum pulse oximetry and the ABG ke beech mein kya farak hai, malum hona hai. होना चाहिए ओके सो पल्स ऑक्सीमेट्री वेन यू आर ऑन ए नाइट ड्यूटी पेशेंट अटेंडेंट कम्स इन एंजाइटी एंड वेक्स यू अप एंड टेल दैट माई डैडी इज डेड सर प्लीज गेट अप सर फ्रॉम यूर स्लीप वाई विल ही से बिकॉज यू विल टेल हिम देखो बेटा वो पल्स ऑक्सीमेट्री के ऊपर जो वैल्यूज होता है ये नॉर्मली 90 और 100 के बीच में होना है अगर वो कम हो गए तो मुझे बताओ यू विल टेल एंड गो बिकॉज यू हैव टू सॉल्व एम्स पीजीआई प्रीवियस क्वेश्चंस एंड प्रिपेयर फॉर एंट्रेंस ना तो करते करते सो गए तो पेशेंट आल्सो इज वेरी हेल्दी हैप्पीली स्लीपिंग सडनली दैट पल्स ऑक्सीमेट्रिक आर डिटैच फ्रॉम हिज फिंगर एंड दट के दट इज शोइंग बेस लाइन देर इमीडिएटली पेशेंट विल अटेंडेंट विल कम रनिंग एंड वेक यू ऑफ फ्रॉम द स्लीप ओके So, 
if your patient is a film actress and committed attempted suicide what will her fingers will contain a beautiful blue nail polish that can affect the oximetry because oximetry is based on what detection of cyanosis which is also blue color detection of the color spectrum it will show the possible saturation levels red color mein hai ya blood purple color mein hai ya blue color mein hai based on that so blue nail polish or any abnormal hemoglobin uh, like methemoglobin uh, there are various factors poor perfusion suppose patient has a congestive heart failure the blood is not pumped properly into the extremity if the blood flow is slow and sluggish also pulse oximetry values will alter oxygen saturation looks low that's the reason always you should compare patient before concluding transjugular intrahepatic porto systemic shunt kaha karte doctor cirrhosis of liver mein portal hypertension severe hai to karte iska absolute contraindication kya hai actually you can contest this question because earlier they used to think polycystic liver disease as a contraindication but there are papers which support that uh, uh, if you go to the journal of vascular and interventional radiology polycystic liver disease was commonly cited as a contraindication to the tips but uh, there is a contra uh, it is no more a contraindication for performing tips is the modern school of thought maybe examiner missed this uh, journal finding so he gave that as an answer but that is not a contraindication anymore huh? but still ye hamare haath mein nahi hai cirrhosis liver mein hota ya brain mein hota malum hona hi badhiya cheez hai mbbs level mein uske upar tips ka contraindications kya hota hai too much huh? okay unless you have read bailey and low so sincerely underlined every line and word of it then only you can answer it okay don't worry if you answer this wrong leave it to god no issue it doesn't fall into that 130 wala group mein nahi hota okay seven year old female image has been shown on iv pyelography what is that called it looks like a snake at death cobra at death ke jaise cobra dikh rahi hai ya nahi dikh rahi dikh rahi hai na तो क्यों कोबरा के अपीयरेंस होता है यूरिटेरो सील है तो यू विल हैव ए टिपिकल कोबरा अड्डर लाइक अपीयरेंस टीबी में वाई देर इज अ ड्रग रेसिस्टेंस देर इज अ मल्टी ड्रग रेसिस्टेंस म्यूटेशन विच इज रेस्पॉन्सिबल दिस अ सिंपल कॉमन सेंस क्वेश्चन ऑफ योर हाउसमैनशिप स्किल्स इंटरवेशन कभी किया या नहीं किया उसके ऊपर डिपेंड होता है so basically what do you have in a tracheostomy tube in abc what are they so a is tracheal introducer b is outer tube and c is inner tube out of the three tubes outer tube inner tube and uh, you have got uh, the um, tracheal introducer is what you have to appreciate gaucher is a lysosomal storage disorder too much you all are also ready with the enzyme everything so this how many biscuit questions hai abhi tak bolo hemophilia ek biscuit question hai ek gaucher bhi aur ek dusra biscuit hai ha to aise biscuit questions 10 10 15 questions hote hain 130 mein uske liye preparation ki zarurat nahi hai right handed person mein non fluent aphasia kyon hota hai non fluent is vernicki or brocas basically brocas right handed guy may left handed is a dominant hemisphere so left brocas area is a one brocas versus wernicke's okay doctor fasia is one of the most high yielding topic stroke is a most high yielding topic in neurology you have to read conduction fasia wernicke's fasia brocas fasia what are the differences brocas kaha hota hai inferior frontal lobe mein aur wernicke kaha hota hai temporal lobe mein so that is the reason it is the left brocas area is what you need to remember inability to pinch on the skin on the dorsum of the toes is called as basically this depends on your elimination skills 
होमांस डीबीटी में होता है यू आस्क द पेशेंट टू स्ट्रेच हिज काफ दट दट लीड टू डेवलपमेंट ऑफ पेन इन डीबीटी होमांस देन वॉट इज मेन बाई स्टेमर साइन स्टेमर दिस इज कॉल्ड स्टेमर साइन अगर लिम्फेडिमा है तो लिम्फेडिमा है तो यू कैन पिंच द स्किन ओवरलाइंग द टो क्योंकि पूरा फ्लूड होता है ना एडिमा फ्लूड सो दट इज दिस इज कॉल्ड पॉजिटिव स्टेमर दिस इज द नेगेटिव स्टेमर इट्स अ कॉमन सेंस एनी बडी विल नो दैट अगर एडिमा है तो स्किन पिंच कर सकते क्या नहीं कर सकते मगर वो स्टेमर है बोल के मालूम हो ना भगवान के हाथ में है तो इफ यू डिंट आंसर डोंट वरी बिकॉज इवन टॉपर के नॉट आंसर दिस क्वेश्चन दिस इज नॉट ए एक्सपेक्टेड क्वेश्चन बट डार्लिन पिल इज ए वाइड पैल्पेब्रिल आई इन थाइरेटॉक्सिकोसिस दिस एवरीबडी नो होमान आंसर दे नो बाय एलिमिनेशन पीपल विल आंसर इट एज इधर स्टेमर आर मोजेस टू नो मोजेस इज डिफिकल्ट फॉर लॉट ऑफ एस्पिरेंट्स स्टेमर भी अजीब बात है और मोजेस भी अनहोनी बात है मगर होमान और डार्लिन पुल तो सबको मालूम है तो लक इधर स्टोन लगाए तो मिल जाएगा या उधर स्टोन लगाए तो मिल जाएगा 50-50 परसेंट लक होता है लक सबके लिए होता है वी आर ऑल लकी बिकॉज वी आर बॉर्न ऑन द प्लैनेट वी बिकेम डॉक्टर्स मोजेस इज वंस मोर सीन इन द केस ऑफ दी डीप इन ट्रॉमसिस एंड देर इज अ पेन ऑन द काफ मसल वेन एवर you compress it forward against the tibia so that is basically the similarly any any dvt make how do you test a dvt stretch you have to produce a stretch and that will elicit a pain simple huh eh? that's the point apoptosis without apoptosis there is no question paper aur ek bar aims mein hota aur ek bar pga mein hota okay doctor why our mock tests are very popular is because even in our full scale grand test on every sunday similarly we will create 65 percent questions which are expected to be solved by you around 50 questions we create common sense wala or 20 questions idiotic questions which are in god's hand there is a reason in the mock test also if your score is 150 160 chance of you are getting an ultimate exam is there so there is a reason keep taking mock test from this sunday onwards i will discuss the question paper uh, explanation also 9 to 12 mock test and 12 to 2 is a discussion so apoptosis kyo hota hai it is all because of the internally controlled program inside the mitochondria some activation factors will lead to the apoptosis so pro apoptotic anti apoptotic factors everything on apoptosis you must be 100% sure so we have all that available in the online video library please review in the anatomy to medicine.com now doctor immunization against the measles is an example of it is against the measles hence specific protection lashkani khan what is the cause hgprt hypoxanthin guanine phosphoribozyl transferase deficiency where is that enzyme basically involved where is that enzyme basically involved <coughs> typically if you look at the purines purines pyrimidines follow me aapko purines ka tayari either it can happen by using all initial ingredients jaise agar aap semiya upma nahi to idli ki taiyari karna hai nahi to dosha ki taiyari karna hai kya karte aap ghar mein you will take the uh rice flour you will take the oil you will take all ingredients and then prepare the dosha one method second method kya hota you bring from hotel a ready made dosha put it in the heater to dosha heat ho gaya it's not dosha is a bad example nobody eat dosha like that i mean to say a uh, chicken puff or a veg puff ghar mein taiyari kar sakte nahi to बाहर से लाके गरम करके भी खा सकते अगर वैसा करे तो क्या बोलते हैं सैलवेज पात्र 
पूरे इंग्रेडिएंट्स को लेके बनावट करे तो क्या बोलते हैं डिनोवो पाथवे टू पाथवे सर दे सैलवेज पाथवे कैसे करते हैं हमारे सेल्स के अंदर न्यूक्लियस के अंदर डीएनए होता है डीएनए वेन एवर सेल्स डिग्रेड डीएनए रिलीजेस द प्यूरिंस एंड द प्रिकर्स ऑफ प्यूरिंस वो प्रिकर्स को लेके अगर आप प्यूरिन की तैयारी करें तो सैलवेज पाथवे बोलते हैं इनिशियल इंग्रेडिएंट सबको कार्बन नाइट्रोजन सबको लेके तैयारी करें तो क्या बोलते हैं डिनोवो पाथवे बोलते हैं सो बेसिकली इफ यू लुक इफ यू लुक एट द प्यूरिन बायोसिंथेसिस या बायोसिंथेसिस यू हैव ए डिनोवो पाथवे वे राइबोस फाइव फॉस्फेट बिकम फॉस्फो राइबोजाइल पाइरोफॉस्फेट दैट विल फॉर्म इनोजिन मोनोफॉस्फेट एंड दैट इज यूज फॉर द जीएमपी एंड एएमपी गोनिन एंड एडी नाइन उच्चार प्यूरिन की तैयारी हो गया यहां राइबोस फाइव फॉस्फेट से शुरू हो रहे राइबोस फाइव फॉस्फेट हाउ विल यू गेट इट यू विल गेट इन द एच एम पी शंट एक्सोज मोनोफॉस्फेट शंट ओके सो लेट मी डेल बायोकेमिस्ट्री में प्यूरिन प्रिमिडिन पाथवे फेवरेट क्वेश्चन टॉपिक ऑफ द एग्जामिनर बायोकेमिस्ट्री में we have discussed all that available in the online video library so directly agar uh gmp amp se can if uh, guanine and uh, adenine are produced that becomes salvage salvage pathway ka enzyme hota hai hgprt agar iska deficiency ho gaya to kya ho gaya gmp cannot metabolize into form guanine इसलिए जीएमपी बिकम आईएमपी आईएमपी बिकम जैंटिन जैंटिन बिकम यूरेट इफ द जीएमपी इज नॉट यूज्ड, रीयूज्ड फॉर ग्वान इन प्रोडक्शन इट विल बिकम ब्रोकन डाउन इनटू आईएमपी एंड दैट बिकम हाइपोक्सैंटिन बिकम जैंटिन बिकम यूरिक एसिड एंड यूरिक एसिड लेवल्स विल एलिवेट वॉट मेक्स जीएमपी अनयूटिलाइज फॉर द ग्वान इन प्रोडक्शन For the GMP to become guanine, you basically require hypoxanthine guanine ribosyl pyro uh, ribosyl transferase. Lashkini Khan me, there is a deficiency of this HGPRT. That's why GMP cannot become guanine. That's why GMP IMP will be made, IMP inosine will be made, it will be hypoxanthine, it will be made, xanthine will be made, finally uric acid will be made, and that lead to hyperuricemia in Lashkini Khan syndrome, which is because of HGPRT deficiency. is what you have to basically remember